Damian Priest, it's good to see you. Big match this Saturday against Sheamus. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for asking. How are you? I'm doing great. Cool. Thank you for asking as well. Um, how would you describe, year's not over, but the year for you, 2021, how would you describe it thus far? The craziest roller coaster you could think yeah. of. I mean, wow, what a year. I, I couldn't have written this any better, uh, you know, starting with, you know, finishing up with NXT into the Royal Rumble, Monday Night Raw, WrestleMania, SummerSlam now, crowds back. This is, ah, I, 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 it's everything I want. Would it be fair to say you didn't necessarily expect it to go this way? Like, have you exceeded, at the beginning of the year, if you would have said to yourself, all right, this is what I want to do, this is where I want to be, midway point, three quarters in, were you expecting these kind, I mean, you're, you're on a big stage right now. No, I, I could honestly say I did not expect to be where I am, as far as like on this level, you know, uh, well, I'm in a championship match at SummerSlam. I mm -hmm. mean, this is crazy. <laughs> How did I get here? You know, I think for me, it was mostly, I, I would just hope that I could be relevant and be a part of the show. I didn't realize I was gonna be a focal point, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is insane, <laughs> you know, but it's cool insane, you know? I, it's everything I wanted. So it's kind of cool, like you could want something, you could hope and you could dream, but, when it happens and it, and it surpasses your expectations, uh, it's really special. Well, it seemed to me like obviously the, the debut was great, but the big thing was the Bad Bunny partnership and WrestleMania and whatnot. I'm assuming you knew who Bad Bunny was before all that, correct? Yes, yes. So when, when I put it this way, when it got presented to me and they were like, hey, so we're thinking about pair, uh, teaming you up with Bad Bunny, first thing I said was, I don't think you should name another wrestler Bad Bunny. There's like a big artist called Bad Bunny. Oh, no way. And they were like, no, it's that Bad Bunny. I was like, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. So you were a fan? Yeah, I know Bad Bunny is. Uh, so it was cool that like, like my brother is a huge fanatic of Bad Bunny. So he always plays him, you know? Um, so I, whenever we're together, he'd be playing Bad Bunny music. So that's, you know, that was, that, that's more so how I already knew of Bad Bunny. But you know, you go anywhere. I don't think people realize that you go to any club or, you know, just, out and about his music's playing everywhere right. all the time and it has been for a minute uh so yeah i knew it was and then i was excited you know obviously he's from the same island and then then i got to meet him which is cool and got to know that we're from the we ra were raised in the same neighborhood wow in puerto rico i have a family member that was his brother's middle school teacher come on uh, i mean it's the small the world. idea of the world that is so small small world even smaller island and we like just had so much in common and the connections that it was like did, did the company know this when they did and they had no idea really which it was just the perfect uh just a perfect scenario so the stories obviously i'm not there but it seemed like loves the business respected the business put in the work like he was like a model you know employee backstage for lack of a better term accurate so yes a thousand percent so when you have we, we all know the perception when celebrities come in they're promoting something yeah. and you know the fan bases could go either way obviously their fans will love it but most traditional you know wwe fans they, they, they don't accept it because it's like you're not one of ours you know um and you're here for another reason not because you love this and i think with him it was completely completely the opposite you know, the first day he walked in, um, he was just like, uh, hey, I want to get in the ring, but is there something I need to do? I don't want to disrespect nobody, and wow. you know, I just want to feel it and feel the ropes, you know, because he's a huge fan. You know, man, when he, he came up to me and he knew all my stats from, like, NXT and stuff, and I was like, get out of here, wow. man. Like, you're a bad bunny. You shouldn't yeah. know who I am. That is amazing. Um, and that was cool. And then he, he before he earned, because obviously with his performance at WrestleMania, he earned the, the respect of right. wrestling fans. Right, right. But he earned the boys' respect in the locker room before that, you know. And I, like I, I've said this before, but I remember we were walking in the hallway and Randy Orton stopped him and said, hey man, I just want to thank you for showing us respect and treating this serious and, and treating the business with respect. He goes, you, you're a WWE superstar, man. Wow. And I remember him saying that to him. I got goosebumps and wow. I was like, that was so, I mean, it's Randy Orton, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought that was so cool. I got goosebumps with you just saying <laughs> yeah. the story to me. Um, obviously, you prepare, you hope for the best, but were you surprised at how good that match was, how well he performed? So you said it perfectly. You prepare and you hope for the best. Yeah. And, I, and I believe that he was capable of it because I was there with him every day, you know, in the trainings and just at backstage, like all this prep, prep stuff. Like, I was with him. I was in the ring with him working out, you know? Uh, so I knew that the knowledge was there based on his work that he put in and what he learned but again when you're out there and it's live and it's wrestlemania yeah 
you know, and I remember just walking the hallway to our entrance, like we were walking, we kind of bumped into each other and I started laughing. I was like, we can't even make it to yeah, the ring, yeah. man. <laughs> we were so nervous because he was just as nervous. Because I said, I was like, man, I'm nervous, man. And he was like, me too. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> really? And I was like, why were you nervous? You're bad bunny. I know. I was just going to ask you because he's performed on stages, but this, but is, this different. is a different yeah. world, yeah. you know, and I w but that also made it kind of calmed me down. And I think we were there. That worked for both of us, where we calmed each other down a lot because we were both experiencing a lot of stuff for the first time together. So right. it was kind of like we took pressure off of each other by joking around and goofing around. But then in the ring, you know, you don't know. I, I expected him to be fine, but if things go awry, if everything doesn't work as scheduled, like and the way he planned it in his head, it's how you react. That's the difference between a WWE superstar and any other star in this business is how do you perform when things don't go as planned or or I, or how you had them planned in your head and it happened of course with the rain and everything things were slippery we yeah. were sliding all over the place he didn't miss a beat man like i that was him so impressive to me you know and i'm and i'm i mean i got the best seat in the house i'm right there looking at him seeing his expressions and everything and man he killed it and i was really happy and proud for him what was it like when you guys got backstage afterwards after you knew that you killed it between being emotional and excited and then getting congratulated and hugging him and we couldn't believe that we did that like it was like we just did this you know uh, i mean i'm expecting to wake up tomorrow and uh -huh. be like oh that would be cool if that actually happened still keep in touch yes yeah yeah he's obviously extremely busy of course you know um with his tour, so it's not like we could we talk. We don't talk every day, you know. We we both like we're back on the road too, so right. I'm busy. Our schedules don't line up, and he's some most of the time in a different country or something. So, but we have we have touch base here and there, and we we hope to get together. I'm gonna try to make it to some of his concerts. I know if we're in the area, he'd love to come and, and come to a show. You so. think he comes back to compete, or do you I 100 percent believe there's no shot he doesn't come back. Wow. He has to like he had so much fun, and he loves this business so much. If it, timing works out again, because that's what happened. It was right. just perfect timing for him where he could just dedicate himself to this. He moved to Orlando to train. Like, wow. he took this extremely serious. So, time permitting, if he could commit himself again, he would 100% would be invest, invested in, and he'll be back. You mentioned the nerves. I mean, you, you don't have the full year under your belt now, but you've, you've had some big matches. Do you still feel the nerves? Like, do you think you'll feel the nerves on Saturday? I'm nervous match? right now thinking about really? it. Really? Uh, yeah, 100%. Have you always been that way? Or just when you got to the main roster? I, I think there, uh, to some degree I've always been that way, you know, just because there's always a, a fear of failure. So, mm -hmm. and, and that's one of my biggest fears is failing mm -hmm. um, and just in general. So I, I always, the nerves are always there, but 100% in Monday Night Raw. And actually I felt them in NXT too. Every takeover, every, every TV appearance, everything. I, I always feel nerves. Even in live events, I, I get nervous before I go out. Just because I want to I wanna make sure people are proud to have watched me or mm -hmm. feel good and feel entertained you know so I, I always feel them but they're definitely intensified here you know Wrestlemania now, now SummerSlam and just the amount of eyes that are on us that this is a whole new level you know like people can say that it's oh it's the same thing you know just in a you know in a different location no it's not the same thing like this is big time like I know there are millions and millions of people around the world like people always look at ratings and stuff like that within our country they don't realize that this is a global company yeah like people know my name all over the world that's wild to me uh, and and i just i still can't believe that this is real so yeah the nerves are i know tomorrow i'm i try not to think about stuff too much because i know that I, I i i won't be able to control it and i'll start shaking i mean i get them really bad wow. you know so i try not to think about it and then when i'm out there i just use them to my advantage and just kind of like zone in on something and then like now i'm ultra focused on what i'm doing so i don't mess up so i try to use them to my advantage of anything Reminds me, uh, there's a famous uh, UFC fighter named George St. Pierre who told me before, I don't know, you're, you're an MMA fan? Yeah. You have a background in martial Fighting, arts yep. as well. Yeah, I want to ask you about that. But he told me that, you know, towards the end of his career, even after he accomplished a lot of things, like he would get so sick in the back, in the locker room, throw up uh, when he, before he fought Michael Bisping at MSG. You have to talk to himself in the mirror to just, like, get over that. What do you do to get over that, like the anxiety and the nerves? I, I try to interact with people actually okay. like I need to get in the zone yes and I'll do that and I'll, and I'll put myself in a fight zone like I'm going into a fight but then it, the moments that you have to think that's when it get, that's when you, it consumes you mm -hmm. so I try to mingle like if even if I'm in the gorilla position and some of the refs are there or some of the producers I'll just talk yeah joke around I'll do anything to distract me but I'm doing it on purpose gotcha. uh, so that my mind is not just on that because if not 
Yeah, I'll be a disaster. <laughs> so they talk about your martial arts background a lot. Tell us about it. What, what's, uh, what, what, what have you done in the past prior to this? So when I was younger, uh, my father was, he trained his whole life. Um, and it was a traditional Japanese martial arts, Goju. And he trained from people who trained in Japan, you know. So um, then he passed it on to me. He, he, like I said, he owned the martial arts schools and he was an instructor. And then we had, obviously with me, we did a lot of one-on-one -on -one plus in his general classes. And, and I did that for a long time. And, and I thought that was gonna be my career. I was a two-time national champion in full contact fighting in New York. Um, then I won a lot of other smaller tournaments, but this was a time where UFC was just starting. So martial arts wasn't a thing, and right. fighting wasn't really a thing. There wasn't, like Riddle, for instance, we talk about it all the time, where like it was a lot of his amateur accolades, there's no record of it, because people didn't keep record of stuff, because like, right. it wasn't important. So like, I won these things, and there's, it's not to be mentioned anywhere, but if you look, it's like that for martial arts before, I, I can't even think of like, what number UFC that people really started paying attention and keeping track. Uh, before that, it's just you were just competing for the sake of competition and winning a trophy or winning a medal. But that was it. You weren't winning money. There was no. So I didn't think there was a future in it. So I kind of, you know, he sold his school, closed on the school. He changed his career. Um, I was kind of like, I don't know what to do now. And then just did odd jobs and whatnot. Till one day, a buddy of mine was like, Hey, we always joked about doing this wrestling thing when we were in high school. Why don't we give it a try? And That's to, how it started. And I was like. Yeah, we always we always dreamt of being superstar or being on TV. He was actually so when we were in high school, he would because he's a musician. He would always joke saying that I would become a superstar and he'd play me to the ring. Although he was a big fan and wanted to be a wrestler, but he was more of a musician. He's the the one that played me to the ring at, at Takeover oh. uh, at uh, Halloween Havoc. Wow, wow, wow! So we got to do that. Like my high school buddy, he, we got to actually do what we talked about in high school, which wow. was super cool. Did but, you um, did you grow up watching it as well? Or was oh it? yeah, okay. I started. So I was born in New York, raised in Puerto Rico, then back to New York. While I lived in Puerto Rico is when I became a fan of wrestling, um, and I remember watching as a kid and just loving the emotion that I felt watching. And as I got older, I just knew that I wanted to make people feel that way. And I just like, in my head, I was like, I'm gonna be a, so a W superstar, I'm gonna be a superstar, I'm gonna be a superstar. Then you get older, you're kind of like, ah, it's probably not realistic, I wouldn't make it. And then the opportunity comes and it's like, yeah, why not? I always said it anyway, right. that'd be cool. Um, but it was, yeah, it was definitely a dream. And then it got to the point where, I, then as I got older, now I'm doing it, I can't see myself doing anything else in my life. Like, I have to be successful at this. And, you know, thank God it worked out. Were you a big uh, Savio Vega guy? I loved Savio yeah. Vega. <laughs> you know, so my dad would take me to basically every event in Madison Square Garden in the mid-90s, okay. between like 94 to 96, 97-ish. 97, yeah, 94 to 97. Every event at Madison Square Garden, I was there. I was there for the, the curtain call. Uh, oh, no way. I was there Survivor Series when Taker came down like a bat and Sid yeah. then beat in the main event, uh, Sean for the title. I was there SummerSlam with Taker versus uh, Austin. Uh, you know, wow. I, I was there for so many cool events and then so many live events. Um, so I'd go there all the time. And then Savio, obviously, you know, especially with that New York community of the Puerto Ricans, uh, he was super over at, in the garden. Uh, we were always fans of his, uh, um, my father and I uh, alike. So, yeah, and it was cool. And now that I got to meet him as an adult, as a performer, yeah. it's actually pretty neat. Uh, by the way, the curtain call, did you have any idea what was going on or were you too? You I didn't know? understand it. Yeah. I didn't understand what was happening. I, I remember a lot of people screaming, like, oh my God, what is happening? And I didn't know, like, I, of course, like, I. I in school with the, the dirt sheets, you yeah, know, like yeah, yeah. actual sheets, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. I, I would, we would you know, pass them around and read it. Yeah. So I knew they were leaving, you know, those rumors, but I still didn't understand. I know they were friends. Like I didn't get, I wasn't fully invested of the behind the scenes. I just love watching what I watch. I love being invested in the storylines. So even though I was a teenager, I still didn't care so much to know the other side. Like I just didn't care. Like to me, it was more about the show. Right. Like even, in movies and actors. I don't care about the actor's personal life. I don't care about the character they're portraying. You know, like I'm a fan of an actor, yes, but I like the character. I don't need to know how he lives his life. I've always been that way. So for me, like I kind of knew, but I didn't understand. So when they had that moment, I was just like, what's happening? And everybody's screaming. And I was like, this is cool. Cause you knew it was a moment right, though. Right. That was very adamant. Like you knew this was special. It was good guys and bad guys getting along. And it was like, what's happening? You know, so that was super cool to me. So speaking of characters, who came up with yours? Who came up with Damien My life. Uh, so the thing, which is kind of cool, uh, I'm Damien Priest. 
I, there's, it's who I am. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have to pretend. I don't have to play a character. Uh, when I was in NXT, you know, coming from the indies and all the characters I had portrayed beforehand, I remember talking to Hunter and how we wanted to proceed and him telling me, man, I like you the way you are. He was like, just do this. Obviously, he turned the volume up, like I mean, you've heard it before, Austin say it, you know, yeah. whatnot. He goes, but you as a person, he goes, you're, I think you're pretty cool. Just do this. And then I tried, but I was still pretending. I was still acting. I was still portraying a character. But uh, the difference was I was portraying uh, myself as to who I, I believe people thought I was. Okay. And I remember him telling me, he was like, man, when you figure out how to just be yourself on TV, you're going to be really successful. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, how do I not know how to be me? And then he actually said that while I was thinking that he says it to me because he said that I, I believe Undertaker gave him that, adv that advice to him. Okay. Uh, and he says, and he told me, he was like, I know you're not going to get what I'm saying. He goes, because I was like, how do I not know who I am? Well, this makes no sense. And he goes, but it, one day it'll click. And sure enough, it did. One day it just clicked. And I, I know exactly when it was my, when I faced off with Finn Balor. Uh, I, for whatever reason, I just felt a different comfort, and it just, I just let everything go. And I remember as soon as I walked to the back, the first people was Triple H and Shawn Michaels. And wow. I was like, this is the guy we want to see from now on. And then as it, go, it goes along, I just keep um, getting more comfortable with myself. Obviously, you know, some of the things that we do is character, you know, behind the scenes stuff. Sure. That, that's because it's a presentation, and it is, it is a show. But at its core, uh, the, the every idea comes from what would I really do? How would I really react? Because it has to be real to me in the mm -hmm. moment. So it's easier when I could just act natural. And your entrance, I mean, I would put it up there with anyone's right now, right? I mean, like... I love it. <laughs> so yeah. as a fan, yeah. the fan in me loved Incredible. entrances. I mean, my favorite growing up was The Undertaker. Yeah. You know, like, I love entrances. I love the spectacle part of our business. As much as I, I love combat, like, I, I used to fight, so I love the physicality. I love fighting, don't get me wrong. But my favorite part of the business is the showmanship, that stuff where we get to be superheroes, you know? And I get to do, I'm a big metal guy, like I like rock, I like headbanging, I get to do that in my entrance. I like the idea of archery, I like, like the symbolism, like that it's something that has lasted and, uh, the test of time and, and, and anything uh, post-apocalyptic, it's always used, like any books or movies, it's always, archery is a part of it. So that's kind of what I want for my name, I want it to live forever, that's why I'm like, that, that's how I came up with the Archer of Infamy thing. So I get to do something else that I'm a fan of. And then the idea of my name going in flames, I got that from the movie The Crow, which I'm a fan of. You know, there's just a lot of things that things that I like uh, that I got to put together and have fun with it and and then I got people that are really cool and really good at their job making it look even cooler uh, I love it yeah so I'm a big fan of my entrance <laughs> I get to I love it every time it's incredible man it really is uh, you mentioned SummerSlam MSG you're you're a kid would that kid have believed this 50,000 60,000 people going up you know, against a legend, for, right? You wouldn't have believed it, right? Absolutely not. Yeah. Like, again, how did I get here? Yeah. This is incredible. Do uh, you think about that kid All a lot? the time. All the time I think about it. And, and I have conversations with, with, you know, some of my peers and friends where I'm like, I'm doing this. Like, I'm he this is real. Yeah. This is actually real life. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and it's going to be a thing still. I, I, I haven't gotten over that yet. So I know sometimes people change and you get used to it. I'm happy that I'm not, not yet, um, where every day I'm like, this is crazy that I'm still doing this. I'm doing, like, the kid in me, yeah, that kid that loved and sat and watched every pay-per-view would sneak and watch, stay up later to finish watching Raw when I was supposed to be in bed for school the next day. The kid that, that had so many videotapes that are recording everything from Raw and Nitro and every pay-per-view and everything, just everything about this business. And now here I am doing it. It's so cool.